Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Vallabh Chavla and today we'll be doing a case on condensing osteitis. Condensing osteitis, other name is focal sclerosing osteomyelitis. It is a dental condition which is considered to be a periapical inflammatory disease. So this is a case where patient complained of pain in the lower right side. So as you can see in the lower right side OPG, we can see some kind of radio opacity in mesial root. The furcation area is also involved. Okay, so basically, uh, so this is nothing but condensing osteitis. It is a variant of cr uh, chronic apical periodontitis and it represents diffuse increase in trabecular pattern which is because of some kind of irritation stimulus stimulus okay so radiographically it appears as a concentric radiopic area around the offending tooth and treatment may either include root canal treatment or extraction based on the mobility of the tooth so here in this case furcation area is involved and the tooth was grade 2 mobile so the doctor decided to extract the tooth okay so this is one image this is opg1 pre-operative opg so we took a another opg follow-up scan so this is the follow-up opg okay this is basically nothing but a panorex scout image this is not an actual opg but a low resolution panorex scout image after the extraction few days after the extraction so you can see the mesial root radiopacity seen on the mesial root so still doctor was a little bit uh, confused whether it's a whether some kind of root piece is present in that specific region or not so they went for a cbct of that specific region so after the scout image we took a cbct of this specific region and we found out the radio opacity on the mesial root so the grayish area which is there this is nothing but the uh, granulation tissue or the healing tissue and the mesial root uh, shows some kind of radio opacity which is nothing but condensing osteitis now we'll study about the condensing osteitis in a CBCT scan. Okay, so coming to the CBCT scan, but before that, what actually causes condensing uh, osteitis? It is because of some kind of inflammation inside the tooth when the tooth gets decayed, grossly decayed. Uh, so it's kind of a bone ab abnormal bone reaction which causes abnormal bone growth. Okay, so usually premolars and mandibular first molars are usually most commonly affected. And treatment is nothing but, as, as mentioned previously, one has to under undergo root canal treatment and it can be left asymptomatic once treated. Okay, but uh, can uh, as it cannot go with medications uh, with time it gradually faints the radio opacity may faint on its own or it may remain forever okay so here in this case we'll just see so this is of the lower right side we took a cbct so now we'll do the arch marking here the arch marking is done now we'll do the nerve tracing so before the, that doctor had basically referred just to check if there's some kind of root piece as it was not seen in IOP also so we'll just since the nerve canal is not very well visible in the, uh, the cross section so we'll just fa uh, approximately mark the nerve canal do the nerve canal tracing we can see the nerve canal uh, cortex here in cross section number 28 first we had seen in the cross section number 13 or 14 there's the mental foramen region so we'll just do approximate tracing over here and then we'll go this side now coming to cross section number 28 or 27 where it was a little bit clearly seen we know it's somewhere close to the lingual undercut, uh, lingual undercut area so we'll just mark the nerve canal tracing over here okay so this is approximate nerve tracing okay so we'll just align this according to the arch form okay so there's a nerve canal passing by so i'll just align this thing over here okay so approximate nerve tracing is done now if you want you can just change the color of the nerve and you can just make the final changes of the nerve tracing in the xyz view scan okay so here you can see it's moving in a wavy pattern so we can make the changes in the xyz view scan such a view okay so this is the approximate nerve tracing that is done okay now basically doctor wants to go for implant planning as well so we'll just see uh, evaluate all the roots uh, sockets as well just to check if there's some kind of root piece okay so this is the distal root okay first we'll just see only the distal root okay we'll just get the lines over the distal root and align along the long axis okay so we aligned it along the long axis so no there is no root piece in the distal root you can run it from buccal aspect to the lingual aspect no uh, no evidence of root piece now coming to the mesial root so basically doctor was in doubt whether there's some kind of root piece in the mesial root but no there is no mes uh, no root piece in the mesial root it is nothing but the dense bone pattern which is nothing but the condensing osteitis of the previously infected tooth okay so you're basically just like how when a 
tooth is extracted along with any kind of pathological abscess or granuloma or cystic lesion condensing osteitis is nothing but bone growth which cannot be removed during extraction so hence this type of dense bone island will remain forever inside the tooth so it can be either removed during the implant placement when the drill is passing by or it will remain forever asymptomatic to the patient okay so this is basically condensing osteitis it is always usually irregular in shape never round or oval so it will remain as a dense because it's a uh, kind of a sclerotic bone like uh, it's a, an abnormal bony reaction and hence it will appear as a dense radio opaque mass okay so this is nothing but condensing osteitis here luckily in this case the, uh, it is a little bit far away from the nerve and hence not affecting the nerve canal cortex hence patient has, does not have any symptoms of paresthesia as well patient anyways didn't have any kind of uh, chief complaint before as well but the tooth was mobile grade 2 mobile and hence it had to be extracted now patient will just have to undergo uh, implant procedure we'll just give the uh, given approximate marking but markings are usually given in uh, xyz view so sorry uh, given in cross-section images so we'll have to do the markings accordingly one marking you can just give from the crestal region to the superior alveolar nerve cortex approximately one marking you can just give from the crestal cortex to the osteitis part and one marking you can just in one cross section you can just give the approximate markings of the osteitis part okay so accordingly the surgeon can decide where which cross section suits the best for the implant placement so whether it can has to be a furcation area part or in the mesial aspect root of the other distal aspect root. accordingly treatment plan can be decided designed for the patient okay so this was all about condensing osteitis as it is seen irregular mass in the uh, socket area okay and usually present at the periapex region only okay thank you so much